of literary forms they developed what are their time periods and what is their contribution and what are their considerable works in indian writing in english as well as in english literature in general uh, this is discussing in the uh, in the black uh, lost black black five unit 13 i am discussing right now i am discussing on black five unit 13 page number 179 is my voice audible is my voice audible yes sir ah uh, please every 10 minutes please remind me every 10 minutes don't hesitate because sometimes we may lose the connections i am here keep on without looking at my device i am just speaking by using the mic so please remind me okay yeah if you look at on the page number 179 of the historical background of indian writing in english or indian english fiction here we are discussing uh, because this textbook itself is discussing about fiction so fiction means it may be the short story and novel so short stories and the novel they are discussing and page number 1 yeah it is to okay uh 13.2 it is pre independence era writing it reached in 1913 in 19 that translated work into english language that is his major contribution at the time rana the tagore published to uh published around four novels pre independence era rabindranath tagore published four novels because we are discussing in this textbook about the fiction fiction means the short story and a novel and in another area there is a description the details has given in the page number 180 the nastaniraha broken nest in english lang language gora fair faced in 1910 and gare baire the home and the world in 1916 and yoga yog cross currents in 1929 these are his works these are his works and another person from here this decade especially the early 28th century the decade is much influenced by the famous uh, father of the nation mahatma gandhi and with influence of mahatma gandhi there are the fictional characters and the novel settings uh, their backgrounds the time frames are related to the freedom struggle freedom movements and people are waiting for the uh, mahatma gandhi for example if we look at uh, the raja rao's kantapura novel uh, there are the people waiting for the uh, mahatma gandhi for his touch and for his appearance in their village while he was crossing through their village in a train and in that novel raja rao discussed about the indian village indian villages and indian caste system and their names beliefs rituals such things were uh, such things were portrayed in the early indian novels and and here uh, one more thing one more thing uh, a important person here uh, k s venkata ramani his first novel k s venkata ramani's first novel murugan the tiller promotes the cause of gandhian economics second novel kandan the portrait a novel of new india in the making that's written in the 1932 a narrative about the 1930 civil disobedience movement that is led by mahatma gandhi k nagarajan's atwar house 1937 it is about gandhian nationalism and gandhi's influence can be seen even in the novels written by written after independence for instance k nagarajan's second novel chronicles of kedaram in 1961 and r k narayan's waiting for the mahatma 1955 and babani bhattacharya's so many hungers 
in 1947 these uh, novels the setting was the mahatma gandhi and the freedom movement independence struggle and at the same time that time the social and cultural structures that were existing in the rural areas especially in the villages these novels are represented through their characters and through the settings and another important novelist in this period is milkraj anand who is influenced by the bloomsbury group bloomsbury group is related to our one of the famous lady virginia wolf mrs dalaway mrs dalaway was uh, from the bloomsbury group and same here our indian writer milkraj anand also inspired from bloomsbury group but his novel untouchable this is written in 1935 if you have a question what was the uh, situation what was the condition of pre independence fiction you should write all these things you should remember these novels uh, uh, authors names and their works and their cultural setting and their background the themes you should write in your answer so in in, in a long question in a long question and one among this novel is the untouchable untouchable it's a very very important novel even for your general uh, interest also you should study you should study about this novel you should read and study about this novel it is discussing about indian caste system untouchable it records a complete shift from bloomsbury to shabarmati bloomsbury to shabarmati shabar bloomsbury is in the london Uh, it is in the england bloomsbury group they are talking about different different things and uh, the feminism women's rights uh, as well as the, the race uh, and individual rights civil rights these kind of uh, things the bloomsbury group uh, written through their characters but here here bilkraj anand look at the phrase that is very important it is shifted from bloomsbury to sabarmati sabarmati is the ashram of mahatma gandhi from western modernism modernism to gandhi and philosophy bloomsbury to shabarmati means western modernism to gandhi and philosophy india is much more influenced during the period of a time by gandhi and philosophy he continued his study of the oppressed in his two subsequent novels coolie 1936 and two leaves and a bird two leaves and a bird this information is there on the page number 180 uh, on the third paragraph you can look at it but uh, both of these novels his concern shifts from questions of caste to those of class so he has written these three novels three novels are very very important one is untouchable one touchable the second one is coolie third one is the leaves and a bird it's a consequently 1935 1936 1937 here here because of his transition of writing is from sub blooms bari to shabarmati the same in the way in the gandhian philosophy in a, in the earlier writing he questioned about the indian caste system he talked much more things about the indian caste system and its structure and its roots uh, in india how they will work in this dynamic patterns these things were discussed in the in the in the untouchable but later he shifted these things and upper class within the upper class uh, their systems their traditions and their approaches their modus operandi of living lifestyles that was discussed with uh, with these novels by uh, this writer milkraj anand and if we look if we look at uh, the another person uh, who is he who he starts uh, with happier of his uh, trilogy of course it's a continuation with his uh, uh, novels uh, if you look at here the milkraj anand's uh, 1939 novel is called the village because he's much more focused on indian villages like the mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi always believes the grassroots of india and indianness is existing in the villages if we develop these villages if we understand the village in a appropriate way we can expect and we can see the development of the india in all together so that was the idea of mahatma gandhi and he adapted that idea and implemented through his characters and the settings in his novels uh, in uh, milkraj anand especially so you can see uh, all of all his novels all his novel up to the confessions of a lover the road untouchable the death of a hero uh, and the morning face everything uh, yeah and here another person is that another person in this way 
uh, we can look at uh, Mr. Raja Rao, as I have discussed. Mr. Raja Rao, he has written a novel called uh, Kantapura. It's a small village. It's a, a fictional small village in Karnataka. It is also, he is also talking about the theme was the background theme was the Indian independence and social transformation through the Gandhian way. And that the next later, this early Indian English writer is R.K. Narayan, the famous one, is another big name who always avoided political and social commentary in his novel and believed in art for art's sake. He is not touched the social issue. Novel is an art form. Novel is meant for a, uh, entertainment sake and entertainment with education sake. So he completely fixed his ideas through this art for art sake. His major novels written before independence are Swami and Friends in 1935, The Bachelor of Arts in 1937, The Dark Room in 1938, and The English Teacher in 1945. These four are very, very, very important novel that represents that represents the earlier period uh, earlier pre-independence era, but not discussing the social, social and political issues. It's discussing about the human relations, human relations and the human drama uh, that is happening uh, within the family system, uh, within one's grown up, within uh, their, uh, uh, what is this, the, the developmental activities, is an individual development activities that loomed around. And another person here, another person uh, here, uh, the Muslim novelist is Amir Ali. The name is Amir Ali. Uh, Amir Ali's conflict and K.A. Abbas Tomorrow is Ours, a novel of India of today, 1943. These are examples from other communities. So these things are important. Uh, you may get a question. You may get a question. Who are the pre-independent novels and what are their contributions? Something like that. You can look at here. And another important thing here, Indian novelists after post-independence period, post-independence period, till date, there are many novels, many novelists, many novelists were there, and a couple of them, the R.K. Narayan continued his legacy, even after independence also, R.K. Narayan, the financial expert, he written in the 1952, and waiting for the Mahatma 1955, the guide, the if you, you can watch this movie, when the guide 1958 it is available and uh, if you want if you have interest you can watch this malgudi days malgudi days and the malgudi stories that is written by rk narayan it's a fictional village man eater of malgudi man eater of malgudi all these things this is the contribution of uh, rk narayan it continued till uh, 1990 the world of nagaraj that was his contribution mm. Another person uh, is G.V. Deshani, all about H. Hato, G.V. Deshani. And the famous writer, Kushwan Singh's uh, A Train to Pakistan. It is written in the 1956 during the partition time. This novel is dealing with the partition days, partition time period. His other novel is I Shall Not Hear the Nightingale. And Delhi, a novel, it is written in the 1989. And these are the concerns to discover some notion of authentic being runs through the five novels produced by Arun Joshi. Another novelist, Arun Joshi, his characters, problems, and the alienation which afflicts them are presented as universal rather than specifically Indian. These are his novels. And another uh, concept uh, this novel is discussing is the Indian novelists of contemporary period. Indian novelist of contemporary period. If you look at the Kamala Markandeya, one of the finest women writer, born before independence and died at the 21st century, means recently, recently, six years back. Her first novel, Nectar in Save, appeared in 1954, and her last novel, Bombay Tiger. Nectar in Save and the Bombay Tiger is published posthumously in 2008. Her novels present a remarkable range of characters from Rukmini, a poor peasant, a poor peasant in a to in save to urban poor, urban poor of a, a handful of rice to the highest circles of princely life. Touched all sections, all communities, all communities. And her and there is no utopian or imaginative pattern. 
so that is the special speciality of the uh, kamala markandeya uh, yeah it has written about her novel the silence of desire position uh, position and two origins and another important author a novelist here anita deshan was born before independence in 1937 and her first novel cry the peacock cry the peacock appeared in 1963 i am discussing in the page number 180 183 on first draft, first paragraph is my voice audible yes sir is my voice audible please respond yeah fine yes sir yes sir okay okay fine thank you uh, uh, another one uh, another one the look at her important uh, works she is a padma bhushan awardee anita deshai is a padma bhushan awardee and also uh, and also uh, another important this literary award from indian government sirisi padma bhushan award her westernized educated women appear to have the luxury of freedom of choice but a deep analysis reveals them to be frustrated and emotionally dependent these are this is a this is a, a core idea of the characters characteristics of the characters in anita deshai's novel her westernized educated women appear to have the luxury of freedom of choice but a deeper analysis reveals them to be frustrated and emotionally dependent except in her most recent novels her protagonists have all been women and range from the daughter and young wife and middle aged wife and mother so her the protagonist were changes from for each novel where shall we go this summer it is one of the important novel written in 1975 and a grandmother and grandfather a fire on mountain 1977 yeah or uh, you can look at uh, these characters sorry these characters as well as the novel names here and another one is a ruth pawar jin ruth ruth pawar jabwala ruth pawar jabwala 1927 to 90 sorry 2013 he is uh, a lifetime he is a german born british and american book prize winning novelist is a german born british and american see he has he has three things four things and he started his writing in india also german born british and american booker prize winning novelist short story writer and a two time academy award winning screen writer is considered part of indian literature in english because because uh, because she married an indian because she married an indian cyrus uh, jabwala cyrus jabwala in england cyrus jabwala in england moved to india in 1959 so 1951 and based on her experiences in india wrote novels and tales on indian subjects she wrote a dozen novels but she is the only person to have won both a booker prize and an oscar she wrote for films also she wrote for films also she won two oscar awards for her film adaptations of em poster's novels a room with a view and howards n and a booker prize for her novel heat and dust heat and dust this the heat and dust this represents a beautiful imagination of uh, uh, of characters or uh, you can google it for this novel there is no much description here and another one manohar malgonka was an indian author uh 1913 to 1910 this people belongs to the pre independence era and started writing uh, along with the independence or pre independence and post independence or along sometimes some people writing with the uh, contemporary times also so these are the important people uh and another one the contemporary writings here we look at when we look at uh this is uh, the era they have taken in the textbook it is from the 1980s 1980s the early 1980s the 1981 onwards especially uh, the famous writer uh, salman rushdi salman rushdi uh, midnight children in 1981 uh, that can be cited as a, a renaissance moment for indian writing in english so this book is considered as a, a milestone that's why they named it as a, a renaissance moment because it has a, given a new birth new idea new setting new framework and new narrative style 
to the Indian English novel. So that's why that's why he, this novel and this work is considered as a Renaissance moment. And on the one hand, this Salman Rushdie is a very controversial writer when it comes to the one of his uh, novel was the band in India, uh, Satanic Verses, something like that. Uh, Salman Rushdie film won the attention of an international audience for Indian writers in English. On the other hand, commercial developments in English language publishing within India have played their part in enabling a new crop of novelists to shoot up. So this is not only the contribution of the novel writing, and there is a, a commercial usage because this is a very lucrative job for the writers in India also, because they are gaining a wide range of audience uh, across the continents for the Indian readership, for the Indian material. And another writer here, uh, The Midnight Children is acclaimed by, okay, so that is here. Uh, another uh, important persons are the Amit Choudhury, Amit Choudhury, Kiran Nagarkar, Amitav Ghosh, Kiran Nagarkar, Amitav Ghosh, uh, and Salman Rushdie's, uh, yeah, here he has uh, given a, a list of novels about him on the page number 184, page number 184, third paragraph, a list of novels written by Salman Rushdie. And another important character is the uh, novelist is the Amit Choudhury, a fiction. Uh, Bombay, he is from Bombay. The uh, fiction figures as a symbol of the uh, disorienting modernity to be contrasted with Calcutta, the only city I knew that is timeless. This man is writing about the cities, writing about the cities in his uh, novels. And another person is uh, Kiran Nagarkar. Kiran Nagarkar describes the lived complexities of the lived complexities of Bombay's hybrid culture. Kiran Nagarkar talking about the Bombay's hybrid culture. It is set outside the middle classes. Kaklod is considered to be one of Nagarkar's most well-known novels. And in 2000, he won the Sahitya Academy Award for this novel, Kaklod. The novel is praised for blending of traditional knowledge and less detail. So that means he's giving a lot of... Uh, uh, historical uh, details and events are part of his uh, narration uh, in his novel. Uh, in his novel, and it talks about uh, some kings and the kingdoms also. And another person is the got a award for his writings, Ganapit Award and Sahitya Academy Award for his writings. Amitav Ghosh, we have a novel. Uh, we are going to study him after 10 minutes later. Yeah, these are his, uh, uh, these are his works. Uh, these are his works. A Circle of Reason, his first novel is A Circle of a Reason. The Shadow Lines, we are going to study the second novel. The Shadow Lines, this is, deals with the idea of a nation and a nationalism spans over two continents and many nations. It also discusses the problem of communal rights, the problem of communal rights in India. Uh, I will discuss these things in the other novel. And in an antique land in 1992. And another one, the Calcutta chromosome. The Calcutta chromosome, 1996, is one of the uh, one of the fine novel. It also concerned with the relationship between the science, history, and colonialism in a futuristic detective novel. His novels as a chronicle is the, the Glass Palace, the trilogy novel, The Sea of Poppies, River of Smoke, and Flood of Fire. This is a trilogy from him, dealing, uh, continuing the one series of things. And East India Company, International Trade, all these things that is the dealing with here. And another important literary figure here, Shashi Tarur. Shashi Tarur, who used this historical narration. Uh, especially the Mahabharata, Shashi Tarur's, the great Indian novel. He used the Mahabharata. He used the Mahabharata. Uh, Mahabharata time periods, characters, and backgrounds uh, in the great Indian novel. Uh, Vikram Sheth, another, another, another author, Vikram Sheth, The Golden Gate. And his famous novel is Suitable Boy. It's available as a movie. Suitable Boy. And Equal Music. Yeah, and there are other writers. Uh, 
this uh, uh, Shashi Desh Pandey. Uh, these are the women writers, uh, the contemporary women writers. Shashi Desh Pandey and Arundhati Rai. Shashi Desh Pandey, Arundhati Rai. She got a and Kiran Deshai, a daughter of Anta Deshai, Kiran Deshai. She got a man of Booker Prize for her novel. And there are other people also. Yeah. Yeah, there are the genres. And there are many feminist writers also uh, written in English. Uh, this information is there on the page number 186 feminism in contemporary indian fiction because of the this uh, development of the education accessing education this uh, this uh, development uh, increased after 1990 onwards those who, uh, who started writing 1990 onwards uh, there is a lot of shift uh, because uh, uh, during the 1980 19 19 1980 there was a shift there was a shift that many people the educated urban people started to move uh, going abroad especially america london australia german japan and other countries and uh, they started writing about new things new things and looking at themselves and at the same time in india also there are a lot of changes uh, happened due to this uh, lpg system liberalization globalization privatization that has a uh, given a, a boost to the indian women uh, the access to the education and started working with the multinational companies and cross-cultural companies they are interacting with the different kind of people and they started exploring their ideas and ideologies places so in this context, the novels also are talking about a human point of view, in a feminist point of view. And there are, there are some uh, examples here. The married woman, for example, if you look at uh, the Manju, Kapoor, Manju Kapoor's novel, Married Woman, that is written in the 2002. And uh, the immigrant, another one is the immigrant. And Geeta Hariharan, another person, Geeta Hariharan, the Times of Seas, Geeta Hariharan. Chitra Benerji. Chitra Benerji, she is talking about, uh, she is writing about uh, the Mahabharata retelling from a woman's point of view, like the Draupadi, the woman's point of view. The Palace of Illusions. Palace of Illusions. And the So Good in Black. So Good in Black. There are the these are the women novels. Women novels uh, in the same context in the earlier uh, right the Cheshitesh Pandey written in the Moving On in 2004. Moving on in the country of deceit 2008 and ships that passed 2012. These are the contribution of the Cheshitesh Pandey and uh, speaking or representing about the uh, re representing of the women's uh, voices and Kishar Deshai another person uh, you can read here uh, daisy hassan Deshai, daisy hassan and jahnavi barwa the rebirth jahnavi barwa rebirth uh, these people are talking about the uh, women's point of view and feminist point of view and another thing is here the the one this is a new kind of lgbt uh, form literature uh, from the lesbian and the gay teens, LGBT, lesbian, gay, transgender, that related literature also started in the India and as a, in the in the name of a uh, contemporary fiction, contemporary Indian fiction. It's a queer theory, bisexuality, queer, the sexual nonconformity. These people were writing about their uh, experiences and their desires, their struggles and feelings uh, in this uh, in this genre. In this genre, uh, if you look at uh, the Abba Daveshwar's Babiaji, uh, sorry, Babiji, Abba Daveshwar's Babiji is a lesbian novel about a 16 year young Brahmin girl's sexual adventures with a classmate and twelve woman, women, something like that. Yeah, it receives, it revives our, our memory of both Ishmat Chuktai, one of the novel you have it in the uh, in the women's writing, we discussed these things in the women's writing class. Uh, the quilt, especially Ishmat Chintai. Uh, and the quilt short story, also these kind of uh, 
uh, novel was it? Uh, so this was a short story. Uh, it's a Urdu story, uh, Lihaf. Lihaf. And another uh, contemporary writer, Shobade, The Strange Obsession. Strange Obsession. It's written in the 1992, where the gorgeous supermodel Amrita meets disastrous consequences in her relationship with Minix. And uh, if you look at uh, Manju Kapoor's A Married Woman, it also deals with the lesbianism, is an alternative mode of sexual relationship. And R. Raja Rao, another person, another person who is writing about the gay literature, The Boyfriend in 2003, it's written in the 2003. And Shiraz Dalla, The Exiles, 2011. This book also uh, deals about the homosexuals of man's extramarital affairs and his wife's reluctance, confusion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, another one is A. Revati. A. Revati, The Truth About Me. A Hizra life story. Revati is a Hizra here. Revati is a Hizra, and uh, she wrote about her autobiography kind of uh, work, where uh, where the feelings of a girl are embodied in a boy. Feelings of a girl embodied a boy. She is a transgender. Yeah, these are the uh, books. Those are important. And Sunita Namjo, she is the uh, conservations of cow 1985 in the 19 changing time in indian writing in english in, the, in other languages other languages also because of the educated community is slowly changing one new generation entered into the uh, academic era and in the public era uh, public lifestyle so that time it is written uh, the conservations of a cow a human relationships, uh, which expounds the diasporic lesbianism or feminist socialism with misogynistic a lesbian character in the center. Especially this section is dealing with the most of the novels of the uh, lesbians and the gays. And another genre is called the crime fiction and detective novel in India. Vikram Chandra's Sacred Games, 2000. Seven and if you have a time uh, before the exam or else after the exam, you can watch this uh, web series. It is available on Netflix if you have any access. Vikram Chandas, the Sacred Games. It's a, the web series is available. And uh, Bhattacharya's the Masala Murder, Masala Murder. These are the considered as the uh, literature because there are plenty of the books, plenty of the novels that are uh, talking about lot of things like the guy, the very famous guy who emerged as a very popular writer. Chetan Bhagats, for example, we take, but we're not uh, consider them as a taking into the part of the literature. We call them as a pulp fiction. Uh, for example, our, another Durjay Dutta, Ravinder Singh, I to have a love story. These are all books are there, but we're not discussing them. We are discussing only uh, the which is considered which is considered uh, as a uh, literature, which is considered as a literature and which is carrying uh, some values uh, and which is representing uh, without giving any uh, utopian or imaginative information, the realistic information, which is giving realistic information. Such things, uh, such things we are uh, considering uh, the, uh, the authors uh, consider them as the uh, uh, important novels. So such novels only we are discussing here. Uh, yes, and another one is the campus novel. This campus novel is uh, dealing with the academic lifestyle and the student lifestyle in schools and colleges, especially universities. Academic uh, life, uh, campus novel. This genre is called campus novel. Upamanyu Chatterjee, for example, uh, the English August. This is one of the beautiful book, an Indian story. And the Upamanyu Chatterjee is a civil servant, is an IS officer. And right now, he's a secretary in the with the government of India. But earlier, uh, the first campus novel we may call it as the R.K. Narayan's The Bachelor of Arts. This is written in 1937 before independence, pre independence novel. And Professor M. B. Rama Sharma, A Farewell Party, is also a campus novel. It's in the 1971. And another one is the, uh, yeah, which is written here, this uh, guy's Chetan Bhagat's uh, thing called uh, the present uh, uh, person who is writing about the, related to the uh, uh, academic backgrounds. Yeah, graphic novel, this is one of the graphic novel in the sense, the novel written with, in English language, but here with the diagrams, like the comic, comics. So this is a graphic novel is also emerged in India as a contemporary novel or fiction art form. 
uh, these are the uh, some of the novels here. Uh, Principal Prince of Ayodhya, Sharad Banerjee's Corridor, The Baron Olds, Wanderer's Cups, The Harappa Files. These are the novels. These are the graphic novel. Uh, and another important thing we should uh, look at here. Uh, one is the eco criticism. Eco criticism. Uh, this deals with the this deals with the environment and nature, uh, anthropological concerns. And these are the novels of Sri Vatsan's uh, Countryside album, and Sarita Mandana's uh, Tiger Hills. And and she also written the Gods Without Men, Gods Without Men. Uh, this is a, a talking about the the people, the native people, and their interest in the environment, uh, protecting the environment, and their life with the nature, and how they are giving importance. How this urbanization, industrialization, the new developments, the growth structures, or new economic policies. are changing their lifestyles such things are dealing with the new uh, eco criticism this eco criticism one of the uh, theoretical concept uh, theoretical concept to, to criticize uh, a novel uh, to analyze a novel and uh, based on that they started writing uh, another one is the historical sense of contemporary indian fiction uh, just leave it lot of information was there especially the with the uh, salman rushdi and amita kaneka yeah another important uh, point here is the uh, uh, indian diaspora indian diaspora as i have spoke the indian diaspora means those people who are settled outside of it who are the indians they born and brought up here or sometimes they have a uh, indian origin uh, roots uh, those people uh, during this time period of 1980 they shifted from india there is a geographical shift a cultural shift and they went So your voice is not audible. Yeah, outside of our own native place, we look at our place in a different form and different view. So this. Uh, that's. Probably. Treasure is. the day one major feature of diaspora literature in general and diaspora fiction in particular is the presence of grief presence of grief Death. Hello, is my voice audible? I lost the connection suddenly. Your voice is audible now, sir. audible yes sir okay oh okay suddenly my voice with this connection okay yes and yeah these are the this for the desperate there's a huge list you can uh, look at them huge list and these people are, are looking because uh, the diaspora means it's a grief they have a, for economic opportunities for other other things they move to other countries but their soul belongs to this place when they are uh, remembering uh, with this place and when they are looking at their memories and they feel uh, the, that's that's coming up with a, a grief so that is why the main idea the main feature is the uh, grief uh yeah yeah that's enough for, for uh, this unit almost i cover all the authors and concepts 
for examination point of view. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we look at uh, this uh, one of the famous Booker Prize winning 1997 novel, uh, Unit 14, Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy's The God of Small Things. Arundhati Roy's The God of Small Things. Uh, she has written uh, two novels uh, 20 years later. Of her first novel, uh, The God of Small Things, is written in the 1997. And in 2007, The Ministry of Utmost Happiness. The Ministry of Utmost Happiness. 20 years Years later, she published her second novel. And meanwhile, she has written a lot of fiction, and that to be in the essay in a journalistic way. She has written a lot of things, and she is also a screen writer. She is also a screenwriter, and she is a uh, born in uh, Kerala, uh, brought up in uh, different different places. Uh, she got uh, Booker Prize for this 1997 God of Small Things novel. And her, earlier she worked for television and the screen. Later she started writing uh, her fiction. And she's a, a social activist uh, fighting for different, different causes. Uh, she is also uh, awarded with the Sahitya Academy Award, uh, Sahitya Academy Award for her work. And... Uh, she is fighting for the neoliberalization industry, of fighting for uh, fighting for industrial workers, and especially this uh, Adivasis tribal areas. Her activism we can see. She born in the Kerala, and yeah, her uh, biographical details are available at the page number one ninety seven. You can read them. You can read them, and the summary of this uh, uh, summary of the uh, uh, novel is available on the page number two hundred two, two hundred two, or two zero one, two pages. Uh, the background is uh, setting up in the rural Kerala, rural Kerala village. It is uh, dealing with uh, uh, caste systems, uh, women marriages, and. Yeah, well, uh, these things you can see the characters and uh, because I'm not going to discuss in detail. Uh, but we'll discuss about this introduction to this novel. The God of Small Things is set in a I mean, it's a small town in the Kerala. And the protagonists are a pair of fraternal twins. Protagonists are a pair of fraternal twins, Istapen and Rahel. Istapen and Rahel. The whole book it is talking about uh, about the love. It is talking about the love and who should get, how much they should get, and what kind of love they should get. Such kind of way uh, they are, uh, this novel is dealing with. And and here. Some this extramarital relationships uh, it talks about the series of events that crushed the this family and intercaste relationships. Caste system system, these are the themes. Oh, these are the themes. One second. Yeah. It's a story about the childhood experiences of fraternal twins whose lives are destroyed by the love loss that laid out who should be loved and how 
and how much the book explores how the small people's behavior and their lives which is a major discrimination that prevails in india it talks about uh, such things and there are the characters esta esta uh, which is a short for the esta pen yoko her name is esta pen yoko is rahel's twin brother rahel's a twin brother one second one second the voice is not audible sir now is it okay now yes sir okay fine yeah uh, the one character is uh, is tapen uh, in a short name is the uh, esta he is a serious intelligent and somewhat nervous child who wears baggy and pointy shoes no that is his appearance uh, esta is the uh, uh, twin chosen by baby kochama is a grandmother uh, another character is ammu ammu is uh, rahel's and esta's mother the ammu character is she is married their father of course she is a married uh, father name is the baba only to get away from her family only to get away from her family she married this ammu this lady is married baba only to get away her family uh, uh, that man is an alcoholic and she divorced him when he started to be violent toward her and her children she went back to ayomen where people avoided her on the days when the radio played her music and she got a wild look in her eyes and another person name is veluta the character name is veluta is a paravan paravan means is an untouchable who is exceptionally smart and works as a carpenter at the ips family's uh, pickle factory his name means white in malayalam the irony is that veluta means white in malayalam language because he is so dark it's an ironical Veluta, way veluta is a black person a very black person ah veluta ah veluta veluta ah, okay your bindu is there right she knows seven parvan is a cast in malayalam it's an untouchable cast untouchable cast this person is coming from the untouchable community being with a black color people called him or named him as velta velta means white color uh, he returns to amium to help his father velia popin or uh, take care of his brother he is working somewhere else so now he came back to this place he is an active member of the local communist movement uh, velta is extremely kind to the twins and has an affair with ammu for which he is brutally punished this man is from velita is from a lower caste person and ammu is from a upper caste person they had an extra marital relationship after ammu's divorce and for that he was punished by the people and he is also belongs to the communist party this party was uh, very active in kerala and this time period it deals with the 1969 to the 19 Uh, 97 in between that the emergence of the communist party government government in kerala and uh, it is uh, highest periods and the people's participation and this and another character name is a chako chako is the esta and rahel's maternal uncle he is 4 years elder to ammu he meets uh, margaret in his final year at oxford and marries her afterward they have a daughter sophie whose death in amiam is central to the story the choko's daughter is died in the amiam village amiam village 
this aiminam is a village in the in the kerala so all story is taking place in this village so same as in the pre independence novels we can have this kind of a rural setting village setting same as in the 1997 also arundhati rai written uh, kerala as a background she also written the same things uh, of the village background the caste system the people's psychology towards the caste system and um, uh, the uh, relationships extramarital relationships and uh, the political uh, scenarios especially the communist party movement here and the earlier that was uh, in other other novels it was the freedom movement such things were there and another character here is the baby kochamma baby kochamma is the uh, twins maternal great aunt that means ammu's mother baby kochamma is the ammu's mother ammu's mother so our characters are the two important characters are the esta and rahel these are the uh, twin people twins these are the twins to the ammu and uh, baba so she left the baba ammu left the baba and staying back at her mother's place in the aiman village in aimanam village there she met the velita and ammu has a, a brother uh, his name is chako he is studied in of oxford and, and there he married an english woman they got a daughter her name is sophie and they came back and lived in the aimanam village and her daughter uh, is a death dead so the story revolves around her death and baby kochamma is the grandmother to uh, these people uh, the our twins so this was the background of uh, of the novel and this is the dealings with the christianity and the christian missionaries uh, caste system and politics uh, village setup these things uh, this novel is dealing with indian history and politics and caste relations and cultural tensions caste relations and cultural tensions it is uh, uh, talking about the forbidden love they are talking about here the word is a forbidden love the forbidden love is happening between the married person of ammu and uh, uh, this person the velita is a lower caste man and social discrimination that is talking about the uh, caste system and how they are treating with the lower caste people and how they are uh, giving a reputation to the upper caste people such things were discussed and at the same time also it is discussing with the religion matter christianity and hindu religious things also discussed in this novel yeah betrayal is one theme here but uh, only we can understand uh, baby kochamma's uh, context uh, betrayal in the form of a love ideals and confidence love ideals and the betrayal of the love betrayal of the ideologies betrayal of the confidence such things were discussed if you read the summary you can understand these things yeah another thing is that the the style of uh, the style and the technique of uh, this novel uh, and in this uh, techniques she capitalizes the some certain words certain words so that means she is emphasizing and insisting that there is an importance to these uh, characters and to these to these words and to the places and some local words uh, so that is why this technique is a new thing she used it in her novel and also this novel is considered as a uh, possible uh, autobi autobiographical novel because it is discussing about the three generations story the twins the rafael and esther and ammu and baba and at the same time ammu's mother ammu's mother and father ammu's mother and father uh it is talking about these three three generations the three generations when it is uh, writing about these three generations that means there is a, some a uh, little bit of the autobiographical elements were there from generation to generation sometimes it is going to discuss it, it talks uh, uh, in a, a flashback mode flashback mode it talks of, uh, of things uh, from uh, present day to from the 1960s and the 1970s 1970s to the 1990s such things were uh, shuffles from here and there so that means it is uh, discussing about the uh, time period and the time frames 
uh, so in this way uh, and sometimes we can say this uh, the divorces of parents and uh, living in a village of a family uh, and this also similar to a bit of a uh, this author's arundhati rai's life incidents also uh, similar it looks like so that's why we can call it as a uh, it's a, it's a, we can call it as an autobiographical novel or else we can say this novel has a autobiographical elements and also this novel is uh, centered around this uh, male characters of course but uh, uh, but uh, it is talking about the the female especially the female identities uh, the kochamma or ammu or uh, these things also for, for their identity for their forbidden love this especially ammu's forbidden love uh, when they are discussing of these things uh, we can say it is also a, a feminist novel so that is about this god of uh, small things and another novel we have is that uh, 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 this man's uh, the last of Fifteenth unit, and meanwhile, uh, my friends, my dear friends, I forgot to say, please always look at, always look at the fill in the blanks, or uh, match the followings, or uh, multiple choice. Whatever they come, they will come from the textbook itself, and you will get the answers end of your unit. All units has the same procedure. Don't forget that. even if you remember such things also you can you are able to write the answer in your own sentences try to write on your own rather than uh, by hotting or doing something just so try to capture the point so this is a historical novel this is the autobiographical novel so it's autobiographical novel this is talking about the three generations and 30 years of a time period uh sorry uh, 27 years of uh, 28 years of the time period it is existing such like that and it is talking about the two different generations and the two different values and that is setting up a village setting up in a family and their family relationships and how it is establishing their identity in the family or in a village uh, what kind of caste system was existing there what kind of social norms were existing there and even though she is a divorced woman why people are stopping her to have a relationship with some person something like that you should talk about these things in a general way rather than uh, remembering these things you should remember the characters first the list of characters are available uh, on page number uh, page number uh, 202 page number 202 yes sir which are the yes, important sir. questions in 13 th the unit and 14th unit sir hello yeah the, just yeah yeah in 13th unit uh, better you remember uh, only one thing uh, uh, that is the uh, pre independence novels who are the pre independence novels or else what are the themes of pre independence novels and post independence novels and another one is uh, who are the women writers and what are their themes what are their themes uh, and uh, the contemporary writers and their themes that's it and better uh, in that because there is a huge list is there uh, in the unit so that's why uh, look at the this uh, what is the check your progress fill in the blanks and uh, match the following such things just look at them then you can remember it these three things are the important in the first unit uh, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the 14th unit you should remember the summary and with at least four or five main characters whether it is a feminist novel or autobiographical novel or it is a post colonial novel you should be able to talk about these things if you remember the story and the incidents and the last one is the uh, the shadow lines amitav ghosh shadow lines uh, this, is also, you, uh, this is also this is yeah no why don't have time just to wait wait for 10 minutes on online uh, because this is the last unit in amta gosh you should remember uh, it's a post colonial novel this is the post colonial novel and uh, remember at the this much more information is available for you on the uh, on the unit 13 about the samta gosh remember this uh, character he has a huge novels this a huge novels around the 9 and 7 non fiction works uh, introduction to shadow lines this is very important on the page number 2 20 page number 220 then you can uh, uh, read this novel my suggestion is better read the novel better read the novel before 
uh, reading uh, this uh, characters first read the major characters in the novel then go to the summary then after introduction to the novel you will completely understand in a reverse pattern in a reverse pattern first read the characters and then read the summary of the novel and later read the uh, introduction to the novel in a reverse way you should read the term you will understand and these are the, the themes experiments with the language in the shadow lines and post colonial understanding of the shadow lines this is important on page number 229 page number 229 it is a historical novel it is based on the 1984 sikh rights after indira gandhi's assassination in delhi it deals with uh, uh, 1984 rights and as well as the before independence and means pre independence political uh, status and the characters moves here and there from england delhi uh, bombay or such other areas so it's a multinational uh, characteristics also available in this novel so these things you should look at in this uh, in the 14th oh, sorry 50th unit is it okay okay sir yes yeah uh, i am leaving sorry important question sir important it is difficult on my because uh, it seems all things are the important but unit 8 mrs dalave because uh, she is a women writer and a feminist writer jan astin's uh, pride and prejudices uh these two are important in the first unit 2 and 3 because robinson crusoe is the first considered novel and it's a set a later one is the it's a parody joseph andrews also a novel uh, in the unit 12 alice uh, uh, walker's purple because i i can't say i'm not assured of it because the question paper may be change or something like that all units are important because since it is a fiction all are stories i'm just based on my idea i'm just saying this color purple because this novel has a, a versatile features so that's why alice walker's novel may be important and here is the uh, god of small things unit 14 but if you read the introductory parts uh, you will have some idea then you are you will be able to write the answer this is what i can say because in this section all are novels but remember fourth block is a unit 10 11 12 is the america uh, 13 14 15 is the india 1 to 9 is dealing with the british uh, so that means if you focus on block 5 and block 4 uh, uh, there will be a compulsory questions you have the four novels here two novels compulsory uh, two novels will come from this So from these two units two novels will come and there in that novels you should uh, be able to write uh, you should be able to write uh, uh, like a critical analysis through characters or the themes or plot or the setting background of the novel like that and along with the introductions these introductions uh, you may get the answers what are the like the harlem renaissance yesterday I, i told you harlem renaissance important the last generation is important that may ask you for the short questions when it comes to the indian writing just now i have given the three things were the pre independence writers post independence writers uh, post independence women writers and contemporary writers and their contribution from the uh, part this is uh, the question and answer form and in other areas uh, uh, there may be kind of a, this uh, fill in the blanks or multiple choice uh, questions comes from the same units or from all introductions uh from all the introductory areas there may be the backgrounds they may ask you the backgrounds especially uh, they will ask you the uh, in the first unit 1 and 2 uh, who are the uh, writers the founders of the english novel there the, we have the five founders uh, daniel defoe samuel richardson uh, tobias smollett lawrence sterney jonathan swift this batch was there uh, but there will be uh, there will be a, i hope a compulsory question uh, related to them because these people are the founders of the english language and 19th century features the victorian era features there you should always remember uh, the victorian era the industrialization global sorry industrialization urbanization children are working education is developed people started doing their business so, during the uh, 19th century novel the pride and prejudices dealing with the class structures that's it 
Mrs. Dalloway is a feminist novel written by a, a feminist writer, Virginia Woolf. It's a very, very important one. That's it from these books. Anything else? Sir, today is the last class. Yes, today is the last class. For this subject. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, another teacher will take uh, maybe tomorrow onwards. You will receive the information because I'm not sure who is taking okay. and what is the time schedule of that. Okay. You will receive that. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.